Good morning, everybody. Welcome, welcome to the Mother Church of the Diocese of La Crosse, to all of you who are visitors and guests joining us on this very special occasion, the celebration of the Mass for the ordination of these four men to the Holy Diaconate. I bid you all welcome. It is good for us to be here. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters all, let us be mindful of Jesus who came not to be served, but to serve. Let us be mindful and acknowledge our sins and always the love and the mercy of God for our lives. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us all to everlasting life. Let us pray, O oh God, who have taught the ministers of your church to seek not to be served, but to serve their brothers and sisters. Grant, we pray, that these your servants, whom you graciously choose today for the office of deacon, may be effective in action, gentle in ministry, and constant in prayer. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever.
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the number of disciples continued to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. So the twelve called together the community of the disciples and said, It is not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve at table. Brothers, select from among you seven reputable men, filled with the spirit and wisdom, whom we shall appoint to this task, whereas we shall devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The proposal was acceptable to the whole community. So they chose Stephen, a man filled with faith in the Holy Spirit, also Philip, Prochorus, Icanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid hands on them. The word of God continued to spread and the number of the disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, since we have this ministry through the mercy shown us, we are not discouraged. Rather, we have renounced shameful, hidden things, not, according, not acting deceitfully or falsifying the word of God, but by the open declaration of the truth, we commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. For we do not preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your slaves for the sake of Jesus. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to bring to light the knowledge of the glory of God on the face of Jesus Christ. But we hold this treasure in earthen vessels that the surpassing power may be of God and not from us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I call you my friends, says the Lord, for I have been known to you that the Father has told me. Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When the hour came, Jesus took his place at table with the apostles. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I shall not eat it again until there is fulfillment in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and said, Take this and share it among yourselves. For I tell you that from this time on, I shall not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took the bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which will be given for you. Do this in memory of me. And likewise, the cup, after they had eaten, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my, in my blood, which will be shed for you. Then an argument broke out among them about which of them should be regarded as the greatest. He said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in authority over them are addressed as benefactors. But among you it shall not be so. Rather, let the greatest among you be as the youngest, and the leader as the servant. For who is greater? the one seated at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one seated at the table? I am among you as the one who serves. It is you who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer a kingdom on you, just as my Father has conferred one on me, that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
Let those to be ordained deacons come forward. Samuel Connor McCarty. Joseph Michael Richards. Levi John Michael Schmidt. Daniel Rexford Williams the third. Most Reverend Father, Holy Mother Church asks you to ordain these men, our brothers, to the responsibility of the diaconate. Father Wiersbe, do you know that they are ready? After inquiry among the Christian people and upon the recommendation of those responsible, I testify that they have been found worthy. Yay. I have to find them worthy, ready, and now I have to choose them, so pardon me. Relying on the help of the Lord, our God, and our Savior, Jesus Christ, we choose these brothers to the order of the diaconate. Thanks. Thanks. Now you can do it. I'm about as excited as they are. They're probably more nervous. I'm excited. My joy is great this morning, brothers and sisters, as we join together in prayer to celebrate the ordination to the sacred diaconate of our brothers, Daniel, Joseph, Samuel, and Levi. It sounds like a patriarchal reunion. <laughs> I welcome in their names and in my own all of my esteemed brother priests and deacons, especially brother priests honoring us today from the seminaries where these deacon candidates have most recently studied and all the attending brothers and sisters in consecrated religious life, and of course our own dear seminarians and aspirants, and in a special way, I extend my sincere gratitude and prayers to the parents and the families of these deacon candidates. How proud you must be. Know that we share your excitement and enthusiasm as we hold and offer these dear men before God during this Mass of ordination. Praise be Jesus Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Now and forever, alleluia. alleluia. Throughout our beloved diocese, there is thanks and praise to God today as the Church gains new ministers of sacred service and holy charity. I give thanks to you, my dear sons, as you enter into a new communion with his bride, the Church. For a moment, 
let us consider the ministry to which you have been called. The Catechism of the Catholic Church teaches us that the deacon shares in Christ's mission and grace in a special way, in persona Christi servi. The sacrament of holy orders marks the deacon with an imprint, a character, which cannot be removed and which configures him to Christ, who made himself the deacon and the servant of all. Every story of a vocation is a personal story of grace. All of us have our own story, and each of us each one of us can identify grace moments in our lives through God's gift of free, uh, through God's free gift and free act of grace. He revealed a path for us, a light for our way. All ministry worthy of the name comes from God and is an expression of God's love for his church and all of humanity. In a very famous sermon entitled Divine Calls, blessed soon to be saint, John Henry Cardinal Newman, the great 19th century Anglican convert to the Catholic Church, traces the vocation of great figures in sacred scripture, both Old Testament and New Testament. The call of Abraham, our father in faith, the vocation of the prophet Elijah, Isaiah, Jeremiah, the call of Samuel, and in the New Testament, the call of the apostles and St. Paul, and of course, our Blessed Mother. Then he recalls those who hesitated and who were reluctant to obey. The story of the rich young man in the gospel who had many possessions, and walked away sad. The man who wanted to go back to bury his father first. The one who wanted to go back and say goodbye to his family. And those invited to the wedding banquet who just failed to show up. Faith and obedience are necessary to answer a divine call. Newman writes, such are the, inst the instances of divine calls in Scripture, and their characteristic is this, to require instant obedience, and next, to call us to what we know not, to call us out in, uh, out in the darkness. Faith alone can obey them. It is significant to note that Newman points out we are not just called once, but we are called continually to God over and over again. Newman writes, for in truth, we are not called once only, but many times. All through our life, Christ is calling us on and on to holiness from one thing to another, having no resting place but mounting toward our eternal rest and obeying one command, only to have another put upon us. He calls us again and again in order to justify us again and again and more and more to sanctify and glorify us. Today, Jesus speaks to you through his bride, the church, who today, through the gift of mystery in this ordination, becomes your bride. To join him more deeply in the mystery of single-minded love and total devotion and protection for her through chaste celibacy. Jesus calls you even more deeply into that relationship by asking you to pledge yourself 
obedient to the bishops of the church, to me and to my successors. Thus, and most certainly, you continue to configure yourself to Christ, who, remain, who reminds you today, whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there my servants will be. I conclude once more by claiming the words of blessed John Henry Newman. Let us beg and bring him and pray him day by day to reveal himself to our souls, more fully to quicken our senses, to give us sight and hearing, taste and touch of the world to come. So to work within us that we might sincerely say, Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, and after that receive me to thy glory. Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon earth that I desire in comparison of thee. My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart, my portion forever. I now entrust you, my dear sons, to the prayers of the Virgin Mary, who, like you, said yes to God, not merely once, but many times throughout her life. With the help of her prayers, may you always deepen your love to, for Christ, the servant of all, whom you have been called to represent. May your service and love for the church be a true sign of the kingdom that is already and not yet, to which may God lead us all. My dear sons, before you enter the order of the diaconate, you must declare before the people your intention to undertake this office. Do you resolve to be consecrated for the Church's ministry by the laying on of my hands and the gift of the Holy Spirit? Do you resolve to discharge the office of deacon with humble charity in order to assist the priestly order and to benefit the Christian people? Do you resolve to hold fast to the mystery of faith with a clear conscience as the apostle urges and to proclaim this faith in word and deed according to the gospel and the church's tradition? Those of you who are prepared to embrace the celibate state, do you resolve to keep forever this commitment as a sign of your dedication to Christ the Lord for the sake of the kingdom of heaven in the service of God and man? Do you resolve to maintain and deepen the spirit of prayer that is proper to your way of life? And in keeping with this spirit, and what is required of you to celebrate faithfully the liturgy of the hours with and for the people of God 
and indeed the whole world. Do you resolve to conform your way of life always to the example of Christ, of whose body and blood you are the ministers at the altar? Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, Bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. My dear people, let us pray that God, the all-powerful Father, will mercifully pour out the grace of his blessing on these his servants, whom in his kindness he raises to the order of the diaconate. Maria 
Gregoriati. Pray for us. Saint Gregory. Pray for us. Saint Augustine. Pray for us. Saint Athanasius. Pray for us. Saint Basil. Pray for us. Saint Ephraim. Pray for us. Saint Martin. Pray for us. Saint John of the Cross. Pray for us. Saint Francis de Sales. Pray for us. Saint John Paul II. Pray for us. Saint Benedict. Pray for us. Saint Francis. Pray for us. Saint Dominic. Pray for us. Saint Thomas Aquinas. Pray for us. Saint Francis Xavier. Pray for us. Saint John Vianney. Pray for us. Saint John Bosco. Pray for us. Saint Pio of Pietrocino. Pray for us. Saint to Catherine of Siena. Pray for us. Saint Teresa of Jesus. Pray for us. Saint Teresa of Lisieux. Pray for us. Saint Teresa of Calcutta. Pray for us. Saint Anne. Pray for us. Saint Gianni Berettamola. Pray for us. All holy men and women, saints of God. Pray for us. Lord, be merciful. Lord, deliver us, we pray. From all evil. Lord, deliver us, we pray. From every sin. Lord, deliver us, we pray. From everlasting death. Lord, deliver us, we pray. By your incarnation. Lord, deliver us, we pray. By your death and resurrection. Lord, deliver us, we pray. By the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Lord, deliver us, we pray. Be merciful to us sinners. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Guide and protect your holy church. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Keep the Pope and the ordained and faithful service to your church. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Bless these chosen men. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Bless and sanctify these chosen men. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Bless, sanctify, and consecrate these chosen men. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Bring all peoples together in peace and true harmony. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Comfort with your mercy the troubled and the afflicted. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Strengthen all of us and keep us in your holy service. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Jesus, Son of the living God. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Lord God, mercifully hear our prayers 
and graciously accompany with your help what we undertake by virtue of our office. Sanctify by your blessing these men we present, for in our judgment we believe them worthy to exercise sacred mysteries through Christ our Lord. Draw near, we pray, almighty God, giver of every grace, who apportion every order and assign every office, who remain unchanged, but make all things new. In your eternal providence, you make provision for every age as you order all creation through him who is your word, your power, and your wisdom, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Your grant that you grant that the church, his body, adorned with manifold heavenly graces, drawn together in the diversity of its members, and united by a wondrous bond through the Holy Spirit, should grow and spread forth to build up a new temple. And as once you chose the sons of Levi to minister in the former tabernacle, so now you establish three ranks of ministers in their sacred offices to serve in your name. And so in the first days of your church, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, your son's apostles appointed seven men of good repute to assist them in the daily ministry, that they might devote themselves more fully to prayer and preaching of the word, by prayer and the laying on of hands, they entrusted to these chosen men the ministry of serving at table. We beseech you, Lord, look upon these servants of yours who will, who will minister at your holy altar and whom we now humbly dedicate to the office of deacon. Send forth upon them, O Lord, we pray, the Holy Spirit, that they may be strengthened by the gift of your sevenfold grace for the faithful carrying out of the works of ministry. May there abound in them every gospel virtue, unfeigned love, concern for the sick and the poor, unassuming authority and purity of innocence and the observance of spiritual discipline. May your commandments shine forth in their conduct so that by the example of their way of life, 
they may inspire the imitation of your holy people in offering the witness of a clear conscience. May they remain strong and steadfast in Christ, so that by imitating on earth your Son, who came not to be served but to serve, they may be found worthy to reign in heaven with him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read. Teach what you believe. Practice what you preach. Teach. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, practice what you teach. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach.
is a whole heck of a lot.
Brothers and sisters, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Holy Father, whose Son chose to wash the disciples' feet and so set us an example, accept, we pray, the oblations of our service and grant that offering ourselves as a spiritual sacrifice, we may be filled with the spirit of humility and zeal through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks lord holy father almighty and eternal god for by the anointing of the holy spirit you made your only begotten son high priest of the new and eternal covenant and by your wondrous design were pleased to decree that many ministries be exercised in the church. For Christ not only adorns with a royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. He chooses them to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word and strengthen them with the sacraments. As they give up their lives for you, and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters. They strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we are claimed.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly give you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me, The mystery of faith. as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your Church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all your saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, with the Order of Bishops, these, your servants, who have been ordained today as ministers of the Church, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good.
Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. us against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. 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 Thank you. 
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, to your servants whom you have replenished with heavenly food and drink, that for the sake of your glory and the salvation of believers, they may be found faithful as ministers of the gospel, of the sacraments, and of charity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Good morning, everyone. I'm Father Alan Wiersba. I am the Director of the Office for Vocations for the Diocese of La Crosse. I want to thank you for being here this morning to celebrate this most wonderful day in our diocese as we welcome four new transitional deacons, Deacon Williams, Schmidt, Richards, and McCarty. As transitional deacons, we look forward to their forthcoming ordination to the priesthood one year from now, next June. However, before then, this upcoming June 22nd, just about two months, we look forward to the priestly ordinations of Deacon Ethan Hocamp and Deacon Brandon Gunther. Please keep them all in your prayers as they prepare for ordinations to the priesthood. And again, this year's ordination is on June 22nd right here in the cathedral. Please, too, keep in your prayers all our seminarians, or as we like to call them, our priests for tomorrow. We're truly blessed to currently have 27 seminarians in formation for the diocese. We welcome the seminary representatives who are here with us today from St. Francis de Sales Seminary in Milwaukee and from Sacred Heart School of Theology where both Deacons Levi Schmidt and Daniel Williams attend. We welcome Father Luke Strand and Father Zbigniew Morowiec from Mundelein Seminary where Deacon Samuel McCarty and Deacon Joseph Richards attend. We have our own Father David Olson representing the faculty. Fathers, thank you for the good work you're doing with our seminarians in their formation and in their education. Following our Mass today, a reception and luncheon will take place at the La Crosse Center. Directions to the La Crosse Center are on the back page of your Mass booklets. Right after the Mass, our new deacons will need to meet with Bishop so please do come and join us for our celebration at the La Crosse Center, where there you'll have the opportunity to congratulate them at the reception. Thank you. I also want to extend my uh, thanks and the thanks of, of the diocese to uh, Monsignor Stetzel, the rector of the cathedral, uh, who always makes us welcome for these grand events. Uh, but today, as well in a lot of times, he's really under pressure. So he's got a wedding coming in here at two o'clock. So as much as you're gonna to wanna to kiss and hug and take pictures here in the cathedral, please go and do that at the, at the La Crosse Center. And they'll all be there and they'll still be as cute. They won't be as dressed up, but they'll still be there. And uh, the other thing is to say thank you to uh, the knights and, laders, uh, knights and ladies of the uh, uh, Order of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem. Uh, the knights and ladies are here uh, and are buried in with our families, and that's kind of a good place for you to be because you are indeed very much parts of our families. But in addition to that, they do uh, help and support by their, uh, their prayers, most especially by their prayers, their good works and their contributions to the work uh, in the Holy Lands to take care of, protect and defend the places of Jesus' birth and his earthly life. So, uh, so if you see them, uh, and you'll, you'll, un, you'll recognize them in their, uh, in their attire. Please uh, say thank you to them for their work. If you're interested, we are always looking for new members. So uh, please, if you're interested, please talk with them. In addition to them, 
the support of seminarians, the support of pro-life ministries in our diocese and throughout the church are, are accomplished par excellence by the Knights of Columbus. And uh, I am so happy that, that they're always present for any time I celebrate the Mass around the diocese. And they're really quite so good. And, and they look so swell in their in their in their uh, in their regalia so thank you dear brother knights to all of you our moms and dads to all of you our brothers and sisters our grandmas and grandpas to all of you who are our benefactors thank you because it costs a lot to educate these guys and so we really do appreciate your support your financial support and your prayerful support to take care of these guys and to get the work done that is necessary to provide you with priests for tomorrow. So thank you all so much. God be with you. Uh, get over to the Lacrosse Center and have something to eat and uh, get home safe. God be with you all. The Lord be with you. Amen. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who has called you to the service of others in his church, give you great zeal for all, especially the afflicted and the poor. Amen. May he who has entrusted you with preaching the gospel of Christ help you as you live according to his word to be its sincere and fervent witnesses. Amen. May he who has appointed you stewards of his mysteries make you imitators of his Son, Jesus Christ, and ministers of unity and peace in the world. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protector.